Again, I want to thank you for joining our broadcast today. I believe the Lord uh, appoints time for us to hear the word. And I trust that this is a word that you need right now in this season of your life. And as you open your heart to receive it, the Lord's going to bring a turnaround in your life. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing to our channel, HFWL YouTube. And if you know someone that would benefit from these teachings, please share the teachings with them so they too can become a subscriber. We bless and we pray for those who watch us, knowing that God has a great destiny for them, for us all in Jesus. Now, today we're looking still at the month, the Hebrew month of Adar. And we're looking at what happened in Adar, and we have done many uh, teachings on this of Esther. And we realized that Esther and Mordecai got a divine reversal in their circumstances. And not only them, but of course, the whole nation of Israel that was taken in captivity into the Persian Empire. What the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around for their good. And this happened in the month of Adar. So this is why it's crucial for you to grab a hold of this message of divine uh, reversals. This is a time for things to reverse in your life. Things that have been negative, uh, curses that have alighted upon you, things that people have spoken against you, judgments that have come forth that are unjust. The Lord wants to reverse these things. You have to remember that divine reversals happen because God is always working behind the scenes in our lives. He's always done that. If you will read the Bible, you will see in people's lives, um, one after the other, an example of how the Lord created this beautiful reversal of their circumstance. They went from being sad to glad. So as you hear the message today, I want you to have a mindset change where you understand you serve a God of divine reversals. That is what he does. And in order for a divine reversal, a turnaround for the tables to turn in your life, you have to begin to align yourself with that thought. You must change how you think. You must repent. That's what repentance really means. The Greek word metanoia uh, for repent means to change your mind, change how you think. Uh, you must believe your negative condition will turn about to be a positive conclusion. A negative condition is always subject to change. And you have the power by walking in faith, by trusting in the Lord, by changing the way you think, repenting, to see that negative condition change, to come forth as a very positive, life-giving conclusion. That's the God that we serve. We serve a God of divine reversals. Think of Abraham and Sarah. They were in their old age. Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. But yet the Lord brought about a divine reversal of her being barren and brought forth Isaac through the womb of Sarah. How wonderful is that? Also, when the child... Uh, got into his teenage years, the Lord said, take your only son Isaac and offer him a, as a sacrifice, a burnt sacrifice. And you know, Abraham 
was willing to obey God, even in that his his son, his promised son, Isaac. But what did God do at the very moment when he was going to sacrifice Isaac? At that very moment, the Lord provided a lamb, a Passover lamb, if you would. A divine uh, reversal was his. He trusted the Lord and he believed. Think of David and Goliath. Goliath being a giant. David being such a young person. And yet, through that, we saw a impossible situation made possible by God. A divine reversal. Of course, we have to think of Joseph, his jealous brothers, uh, threw him in a pit. We know the story. And what happened? The Lord turned everything around for Joseph, made him a ruler in Egypt, blessed him phenomenally. Uh, so we have to always embrace our father as one who can turn it around for us. And the greatest example is Jesus the Christ. Jesus died on a cruel cross. He was spat upon. His beard was pulled out. He had nails uh, in his hands, in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. I mean, what more could they do to him? They cruelly crucified him. But yet, Jesus looked beyond the cross to the joy of you and I, because he paid the price for our sins. We don't go to hell because Christ has paid the price for us. What a powerful turnaround was the death and burial to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now we have Christ in us, which is the hope of glory. So in a very real way, it's Christ in all of us now that we're living through. And what a nightmare for Satan. If truly the scripture says that if he had known what would happen with the crucifixion of Christ, he would have never crucified him. It turned out greater uh, than it could possibly ever be because that's the God we serve. Let's look at some few uh, scriptures that verify that. Matthew 5, 11, Blessed, regardless of your outward conditions, are you when people revile you. Certainly they revile Jesus and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Be glad and supremely joyful. Remember, Adar is the month of joy. For your reward in heaven is great, strong, intense. For in this same way, people persecuted the prophets who were before you. So again, do not allow your condition, which will change, to become what you believe will be your outcome. Greater things are ahead of you. You are indeed blessed and you will be mightily rewarded for these things that may be happening to you now. John 16, 20. Verily, uh, truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. He's talking about his death on the cross. Christ knew he was going to die for the sins of the whole world. What the world rejoices at, beloved, we, as Jesus' body, we weep over. And you can certainly see that in today's world. What people are doing in gross darkness, they are lovers of pleasure, self-centered, self-absorbed, uh, leading a lives, uh, lives that are so centered on themselves, and they rejoice in that. We, though, mourn over that. Uh, we, the, the apostles, mourn when Jesus died on the cross, and while the world laughed and rejoiced. But what happened? Jesus goes on to say, 
you will grieve, but your grief will turn into joy. And it was so true that uh, they saw the, the death of Christ and they saw that he was in the grave three days. But then he was resurrected and they were able to see the resurrected Jesus Christ, be able to drink with him, eat with him, speak with him in his a flesh and bone body. What joy they experienced because the Lord was working through it all for our good to reverse those circumstances. You must begin to locate your thoughts there. No matter what you're going through, the Lord is going to bring a divine reversal if you align with that in faith. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 8 we continually speak of this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in a mystery. And that mystery is that Christ now is in you. Uh, you are a Christian, or what we would call a little Christ. The Holy Spirit now is in you. The spirit of Christ is in you. The anointing is in you. And you're able to do what Christ did. And as a body of Christ, we are able to do even greater things than Christ did. This is the wonderful wisdom that was hidden uh, for so many years. Uh, not only the Jew now are called the people of God, but now the non-Jews are the Gentile people who have received Jesus Christ, the Messiah, they now too are God's people. Isn't that beautiful? It is a secret plan destined before the ages to bring us into glory. All of this was planned before the ages. In the foundation, you were actually chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. And it is God's plan to bring you into glory that you are created for the Lord's glory, for his glorious purposes. Verse 8, I alluded to this earlier. None of the rulers of this present world, uh, this present world order understood it. For if they had, they never would have crucified the Lord of shining glory. If they understood what God was doing, working behind the scenes, creating a divine re reversal, they would have never crucified the Lord. But it's the same today in America, America the beautiful. We have so many things happening right now that if we look at it in the natural realm, it, it seems impossible. It, it, it seems such gloom and tomb. But the very thing the enemy is doing in our country it's going to turn out, beloved, for our good. It's going to turn out for our favor because there will be a divine reversal. And I pray that you begin to get that and, and you're not swayed by any negativity. What you see on the media or the reports that you're hearing because God is able to make what is impossible possible for he is almighty so take heart beloved now we will have to move through certain things and we will have to have endurance because there's definitely challenges in this uh, present world but as we live in Christ and we move in faith we begin to experience his great love and we begin to experience for our own lives and for those that we love these wonderful turnarounds that the Lord is doing. But first, we must start to think of God this way and not think of any other way than this. He's always working for your good and he will always, when you align yourself properly, even in the very practicalities of life, by faith, he will move in your favor. Look at Esther 4.1. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, this is when the 
decree was spoken uh, through the king. He gave his stamp of approval to it. it. It originated with Haman, who was an Amalekite, who was an enemy of God's people for generations. He had such a hatred toward Mordecai that it, it expanded even to his people, the Jewish people. This decree was terrible. It was a decree to annihilate and to steal and take away all their financial goods. And this time was set uh, on, the, on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. And we are now in the 12th month of this of the spiritual year. Next month, we will go into Nisan, which is the beginning of the months. And this is when we celebrate Passover. Our Passover lamb, Jesus the Christ, whose blood was shed for us, that we would overcome death, hell, and the grave. What a wonderful, wonderful way to start off this new year that's coming very shortly. So when he learned of that decree, what did Mordecai do? He tore his clothes, he put on sackcloth and ashes, and he went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. He wasn't ashamed. He wanted people to know where he stood. And he was doing this as a prophetic act of repentance for his people, that the Lord would come forth and turn this situation around. Mordecai was a great man of faith. He was a righteous man. And the Lord had placed him as the uh, guard of the king's gate for such a time as this. He was a very high official in the empire of Persia. And along with him, there was this holy alliance with his cousin Esther. And you see, even though all these horrible things were happening, the Lord was already moving in the favor of God's people. So we read the result of all that in Esther 9, 1. On the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, but now the tables were turned and the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. This is what I want you to understand about our Lord. He is going to empower you to overcome every enemy. And our enemy, our adversary, is Satan. Yes, we do have people who are moving in flesh and blood that may come against us. But the root of that hatred in those people who persecute us or who lie or say all manner of evil against us, the root of that is the devil. But as we trust in the Lord, we know we're going to be highly rewarded in heaven for that, which if you think about it, it's wonderful because that's our eternal uh, everlasting life where we will be rewarded for living such a godly life on the earth. But the Lord will also turn the tables for us here on the earth, just as he did for the people of Israel. That is the kind of God we serve. Do you think of the Lord as a God of divine reversals? And do you want a divine reversal? Are you calling out for divine reversal in your conditions? Because you're aligning your thoughts now to the God that we serve. Never underestimate, beloved, the power of the Lord, the power of a divine reversal. Psalms 30, 11, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and you clothed me with joy. So many people right now may be mourning. They may be mourning over a lost loved one, someone who is a prodigal. So many people may be even mourning the death of someone that they were very close to. Perhaps there's been a downturn in your financial situation. Uh, uh, perhaps you uh, were looking forward to be being promoted and you, you know that you're a good worker, 
but you didn't get promoted, not because of God, but because of man. Well, take heart, beloved, because God always has the final say. And eventually you will be rewarded if you have the faith to believe that. And you start to align your thoughts with that. Can you see yourself saying this even now? Lord Jesus, you've turned my wailing into dancing. You've removed my sackcloth and you've clothed me with joy. Begin to speak that even now. Decree that over your life and whatever situation that you find yourself in, whatever condition that's subject to change right now, you may be dealing with issues with uh, your physical body. Look, the Lord can turn it around. Believe that the Lord will turn it around for your favor. And do this now because we're in the month of divine reversals where there's power of the Holy Spirit. There's this light this energy from God that is available for us to grab a hold of, to believe. Life-giving, the life-giving power of the Word of God. Now's my time, Lord, to grab a hold of this, align with this, and to move out of the month of dark, knowing that you are going to turn the tables for me just as you did for so many other saints, godly ones that I read about in the scripture. Looking at Genesis 50, 19 through 20, this is what Joseph said to his brothers. When Joseph was exalted, he had actually gone ahead to Egypt by the Lord's providence so that he could bless his own family. Of course, they didn't know this. Joseph didn't know it at the time, but God knew it because God knows all things. He has the foreknowledge. And so when his brothers uh, were, were, were brought before him after uh, their father Jacob had died, they thought perhaps Joseph will come against us for what we did to him. But this is what Joseph said to his brothers at that time. You intended harm to me. So true. He was he was speaking the truth. They did intend harm to Joseph. But but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And truly, God worked through Joseph in uh, the land of Egypt to save many lives. And you should read the story of Joseph. It is so phenomenal. He's a type of Christ. It's such a beautiful story of how he held on to his dream, how he held on to the destiny that the Lord had given to him through a dream. And he went through many difficulties and many challenges, but he endured patiently endured and the lord greatly exalted him to a, a a place of great authority and power and through his wisdom the lord used joseph to save many lives we must think the same thing beloved of our own lives god is up to something good in your life no matter what the natural realm appears to be speaking or manifesting you must turn away from the natural realm and look at the eternal realm for we serve an eternal god romans 8 28 we all know this scripture we are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into his plan for good to uh, and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Honey, you love the Lord? Yes. You have asked that his purposes would be done through you. You have said, Lord, I want to be in partnership with you. You're in heaven, Father, but I'm on earth, and I want to partner with you, that I would be about my Father's business, even as Jesus was about his Father's business, because I love you so much. If that is how you think, and if it's not how you think, then you must repent, because your thoughts have to align with God's thoughts. God will always work in your favor. If 
you love him and you are called according to his design and purpose. My precious hearers, surrender your will to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord because he has a great destiny for you and he has great purpose, an unbelievable dream he will give you and you will be able to accomplish it in the Lord. He is able to do far beyond what we could ever think, even beyond our wildest imagination. So no matter what you're going through, if you're going through a time of struggle right now, and you can't understand why this is a month of joy, yet you are faced with many challenges, relocate your thoughts, beloved. Because there's joy and being confident that the Lord is going to turn it around for you. Just as he turned it around for Joseph, David, Abraham. Just as he turned it around for Apostle Paul when he was in prison. Yet those many years that he was in prison, he was able to write to all of the churches that he was in partnership with. And now we have the blessing of those letters. The Lord is able to take any situation and turn it around for your joy. Beloved, there is joy in the divine reversal the Lord has planned for you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, to be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.